it's important to understand that 50% of all events will eventually be a one in a row. Not in every shoe, not in every half shoe, <laughs> you know, but if you play enough shoes and you were to just put them all together, honestly, you would see what I'm talking about. The, the second part of this is, is that the two in a rows, the two in a rows will be 25% of all events. The three in a rows will be 12 and a half percent. And Everything four or more will add up to twelve and a half percent. Okay, so the whole the whole concept, you know, was when I was, you know, as I've been playing five D, I started realizing that, you know, I'm trying to play every element of it that I can, but I also realized that just looking at the events of one, two, and three in a row, I'd actually be covering eighty seven percent of all events. And in the interest of simplicity, I realized that for somebody to do that, as opposed to try to really play 5D, okay, it's much, much simpler. And we're still going to get 80% of the events. So we're going to have a chance to uh, participate uh, on 87% of the betting decisions. That is critical to understand what we're going to talk about. I took three shoes that I had played. One was here at the Red Rock, which just happens to be the casino closest to my house. I didn't play it all the way through. I got to a point where I had a very comfortable win, and I said, I'll leave it at that. So, again, the first shoe that we're going to talk about was from Red Rock. The second shoe was one that I played at a uh, local casino called Lucky Dragon that opened about a year ago here in Las Vegas. The third shoe came from a shoe uh, 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 casino pretty much across the street by about, you know, it's about half a mile down the road from the Lucky Dragon. It's called Palace Station. In Baccarat, we are either looking for a high level of bias, which would be something greater than 50 50, or we're looking for something to just average out to those numbers I gave you earlier. So when I started playing that particular shoe, I'm only going to talk about ones right now. When I started playing that particular shoe, which was played at the Red Rock here in Las Vegas, immediately I had three ones. First three hands, bank, player, bank. And the whole concept behind the 87% solution or whatever you want to call it is we are looking for points at which the event counts dictate a switch in strategy. So to start with the, the situation we have, we've got uh, a bank. It changes over to the player. It changes over to the bank again. Okay, so right now I've got two opposites. I'm only going to do the first two hands. I've got two opposites. See, I have one from bank to player. That's one opposite. I have one from player to bank. That's two opposites. Okay? So I'm going to guess, for the time being, after I get a one, doesn't have to be a confirmed one. You're seeing it on a card as a confirmed one. I'm going to go and bet on the player on the next one. I'm going to say that that third one is going to go opposite again. And it did. Okay, so now I've got a situation where I'm trying to figure out, okay, I've got at that moment in time, I've got a bank, a player, a bank, and a player. All of it's been opposite so far. So logically, if I'm going to make the next bet, I'm going to get that player, I'm going to bet that it will go back to bank, which I did bet that it went back to bank. It did not. You can see it went to two in a row. Okay. I'm not going to deal with two in a row right now. So I'm going to go to the next time that I see a one. The next time that I see a one is it is the third bank result. 
Hopefully everybody sees that. So I've told you so far that I think the ones are running higher than they normally should or will over a long period of time. Because that has three opposites and one repeat on ones, I'm going to bet that that, that after it goes to the, uh, uh, the next one, which is in the banker column, I'm going to bet it goes opposite again. I did bet that it would, and it did. It went back to player. Now I've got a situation where, once again, I've got another one, an event of one so far, but I'm going to bet that it goes opposite because that is what's, that's the bias we're seeing right now. We're seeing a bias on opposites on the one. Hopefully everybody sees that. So I'm going to bet that player goes back to bank, and it does. So five times we've had a one go opposite, and one time we had had the one repeat. Okay? We just had a player that after one went opposite to the bank. I got another one on the bank line. So far, all I have is a one. Remember, we, we've I've laid out the whole shoe as it occurred. But you have to understand, I was playing it one hand at a time. I didn't have the whole shoe in front of me. You know, I I chose this shoe because it illustrates the concept. Okay. Anyways, if we go through the shoe, I'm not going to do every single one. And what we're really what we would really be trying to keep track of is one opposites and one repeats. And we would look at that and. If it if it doesn't keep coming back to fifty fifty like fifty or, or I'm sorry five opposites and five repeats, okay, then we're going to bet the bias. Now a repeat after a one is only when it goes to two. So that's that's a different kind of repeat than maybe you know you might be used to in the forms vernacular. In other words, I'm only concerned right now. Like we're illustrating the concept of ones. I'm only concerned with ones that either go opposite or they switch to a two. After a two, or once a two occurs, I am not going to bet the next hand. I'm going to wait for another one. And one of the things we're learning in, in, as we go through this, um, and I have been on the forum since 2010, you, you learn that you don't need to bet every hand. As you can see, right now, I've got, if we go further out into the shoe, you'll see that four that's on the banker line. Now, again, I'm only concerned with the second of those, you know, of that uh, particular four in a row. I'm only concerned with the second when it went from one to a two, and then I'm going to wait for another one, which happens on the player line after the four. Okay, and guess what I'm going to do? Because I've, if you look at my opposites and repeats, everybody just take a minute and count how many opposites there have been. Okay, and that's after a one. There have been eight opposites after a one. And there have been three repeats. So what do you think I'm going to do when I see another one down on a plural? I'm going to bet that it's going to go opposite back to bank, and it does. Or did, I should say. Hopefully everybody's understanding what's going on here. There's a bias in this particular shoe of one in a row. Far more than 50%. Well, you know, what it would average out to over the course of a, a, you know. In fact, and Keith, I'm going to just make a claim now or a statement because I don't want to, you know, we don't have to go through this every single one because we've got a lot of other stuff to cover. But when I stopped playing this shoe, okay, and if you look towards the end of the shoe, you can probably guess when I stopped playing it. If you look down towards the bottom, and remember, this was not a full shoe. If you look down towards the bottom, you'll see those two fours in a row. And then you'll see it, it does go back to one, and then you'll see a two. Once I started seeing that, you know, as soon as it was, it was very choppy, so to speak, in the beginning, once I started seeing the repeat happening, 
I stopped playing that shoot. I stopped playing it. Okay? Because again, it looked to me like the bias could be changing and I didn't want to lose my momentum and how many units I had won at that point. In fact, if you count the number of ones, I believe it's 19. I think that's the number I came up with. It, the twos were seven in a row. I mean, twos were, uh, events of two were seven. Events of three, there, there weren't events of three. They're all fours. Okay, and there were three of those. And there was no fives, at least up to that point. So I had a total of 19 plus seven plus three. I had a total of 29 events. I told you before that the ones in a row in an in a average, you know, course of a shoe or shoes will be 50%. Well, my event count on ones in a row was 66%. 19 as compared to 29, which is the total number of events. So again, what I was doing, what I, with the reason I wanted to illustrate it for you this way, this is an actual shoe played uh, about a week ago. Um, but I made a decision to stop playing the shoe when I got into that little rough patch. And I think is I, I know there's some, you know, some of our professional players are probably on the line of people from who knows all over the world. I don't know. But I think that anybody who plays Baccarat long enough starts seeing this stuff in their sleep. I mean, literally. Now, I've been playing for almost 30 years. That is the truth. I'm 62 years old. Okay. And I learned to play in Macau, the old Macau. There's one casino. It took a long time for me to really even understand about the event counts and candidly if you tell some of your background playing friends a lot of them will look at you like what what do you mean because they don't know they don't know that's the actual true statement it is true okay so that's the ones now i don't want to we're going to talk about twos in another shoe but I want to show you something just so you realize, had I played the twos, okay, again, I'd be looking for, first I got a one, then I got another one, that's a two, and I'd start looking. Are those going opposite, or are they going from two to three? I'm not concerned with anything past three. Are they going from two to three? Well, if you count them up, there's actually seven twos, there are no threes, and there's four or, or three fours. So the fours had to go to three to get to a four. They had to go to a three first. I'm not concerned that they ended up being four, though. So if I had chosen to, I could have been playing twos as well. So to summarize, again, this is only to illustrate the concept of one in a rows being very something, something very important you want to look for in the shoe. Eighty percent of the time flat betting, um, people who play with me all the time realize that is the way I play. Uh, sometimes I will go up a little bit, but um, only I only do it when I feel that I'm, uh, I'm 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 going to win the next bet, so to speak. Okay. So no, these are this is flat betting. Okay. Uh, another. You can use a progression, by the way. You know, but I I wouldn't advise it unless you really know what you're doing. Yeah, it works good if you type the question. So if you have one, please type it. Uh, what was your thought process for the two for the three three twos? If you if you can go back to that, Kevin, we got a question from Eric. Yes, say it again now. Sure. What what was your thought process for the three twos? Okay, the, there was there were seven twos, not counting the last one. The reason I can't count the last one is because. I didn't go, I stopped then, I, I, I stopped, I truncated my play. So I'm not sure if that would, two would have gone to three, four, or whatever, but I'm only concerned if it goes to three. But now, what was my thought process? My thought process was that I was seeing so much good activity on the ones, okay, that I was only going to play ones in that particular shoe. Again, very important to uh, uh, learn the discipline 
of not trying to do too much at once. Yes, I could have played the twos. I I saw for the twos were at one point, and let's see, I'll count them. Yeah, there's six twos, and there's only one thing that had gone to three. That goes back to bank, back in the beginning part of the shoe. Uh, I have it all. I was already on the ones at that point. You know what I'm saying? I'll illustrate how you know how to combine this all at the end. Is there a count of when you go from the opposites on the ones to the repeats on the ones? In other words, if you got three opposites and now you're getting into after the ones some repeats, how soon will you switch to betting on the repeat? I will uh, generally, uh, when as long as the disparity, in this case between ones and twos, because I really don't care about everything else, okay? Because all all threes have to start at two into a two, you know, et cetera, et cetera. If the disparity gets down to two or less, two or less. So let's say it was. Uh, I'm going to make this up. Let's say it was. Uh, 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 we had uh, ten ones that went opposite. And all of a sudden, we had eight. The repeat started catching up. We had eight. That's where I'm going to look very carefully about what's going on. And do I need to move to either something like OTBL? You know, and again, I don't, I don't play this just by itself, to be very honest with you. I'm trying to help you guys understand that this is like, you know, a screwdriver in your tool bag. But you got to have a hammer and nails and, you know, a, a wrench and everything else. This is just a simple way to pull out a few units out of a shoe. And candidly, if I had in the beginning started out and it was like, you know, two opposites, three repeats, two opposites, another repeat, two, you know what I mean? I probably would have abandoned the whole idea of what I was doing. Because... You know, it just wasn't working the way I'd like to see it work. The the difficult thing for me to uh, probably explain to you is that because I've got all this, not just what you're seeing, but on my card, I've got the total opposite and repeat counts. I've got the OTBL and TBL count. I've got the, if you go back three, um, it's called, we call it OO. If you go back three, we call it TT if it's on the same side. I've got all that. I've also got the numerical ending values of the decision. So, like, if the bank won seven to two, I've got that. I've got that information for the entire shoe on my card. That helps me see in five D whether there's a SAP thing that I should be looking at, or whether there's a MDB thing that might be occurring. So, I'm really breaking out. Uh, uh, this element for you to illustrate you should be looking for these kinds of things. Okay, hey, I'm here with Jeremiah, one of our top players from BeatTheCasino.com. Jeremiah, did you have a good time playing tonight? Had a great time. Did you win some money? I won a lot of money. All right, would you tell anyone to join? If you are not a member, you have got to join up. It All is right. the best out there. All right, man, well, thanks a lot for coming. I'll see you next time. See you next time. All right, bye-bye.